Whether you've never heard of Lake As We Go or you're starting to think about moving here, today we're talking about five pros and one con to help you decide if it's a good fit. Let's go. Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Cullen and this is Brianna Cullen and together we have a local real estate company right here in Portland, Oregon. So if you guys are looking to move, whether it's next week or next year, this week, next year, <laughs> go ahead and reach out and give us a call. Your information's right down there in the description area. We'd love to set up a Zoom and talk to you guys about your move. Okay, so today we are talking about the five pros and one con of living right here in Lake Oswego, where we are right now. We're in the heart, the downtown area of Lake Oswego. It's drizzling a little bit, so that's why we're kind of standing under the trees here. But we're not talking about weather today. So you can set that aside. We're not talking about weather as a nope. pro or a con. Nope. It is drizzling, it is late May, but we've had a beautiful spring so far. So Amazing. we take the good with the bad. So let's jump right into our first pro, which we are gonna talk about the small town feel of Lake Oswego. So we're walking through the downtown area. This is a little courtyard and right out here where we're walking is where farmers markets are held and all kinds of festivals, community festivals. There's a Christmas tree lighting ceremony right down here every year, 4th of July parade, everything that feels very quintessential, family-friendly small town. Yep, and there's the Christmas tree right in between us, right there, that is living, gets decorated every year. And like Bryce said, you know, this is the main courtyard, farmer's markets, all the festivals and things like that are kind of centered right here in this whole area behind us. And there's a main street right over here with a French bakery and an ice cream shop and coffee and, you know, just a main street feeling, really a community gathering space. We spend a lot of time down here, whether we're taking our kids to a drawing class or coming down for ice cream or dinner. This really is like the hub of the community. I think one of the best parts about the small town feel in Lake Oswego is that it's bordering the city of Portland. So you have the best of both worlds, those small town sort of coziness, charm, sense of community, but then you also have everything you need in a big city like an airport and great medical care, universities and museums, all the great city life as well. Yeah, and me being in real estate, it's amazing living here just for the location because you really are central to everything in Portland. You're not too far out in the boonies kind of feeling of the suburbs. You're literally just right up against Southwest Portland. Really convenient, just a 20 minute drive. You don't even have to hop on the highway of the 43 right over here to get downtown. But it isn't a suburb, it is its own small town, which That's means right. that we have our own police and fire department and the city of Lake Oswego itself, the city services, the parks and rec department, all provide a lot of services and amenities to the community. That's right, we have our own senior citizen community, the town hall is right over here across the street and the main police station. The firehouse is like another block up from that. It really is its own self-contained town. Nothing is more than 11, 13 minute drive all the way around the lake. Bunch of different shopping areas. We've got the Bridgeport Mall, which is technically in Tigard, but kind of is like an extension here of Lake Oswego. Anything you can think of, it's all right here. And then also being a self-contained town, we have our own school district. Not any school district, but the number one rated in the entire state. Now this is a big draw for people to Lake Oswego. As second pro. This is our second pro. <laughs> now, our daughter just started kindergarten this year and I can say hands down, it's been an amazing experience. We were expecting a lot, but it's definitely far exceeded our expectations. Absolutely. A lot of clients who do reach out to us, schools is their top priority for their kids. In a lot of big cities, school is either very competitive or people are really looking at private as their best option which is expensive and i think for a lot of people they really want their kids to go to the local public school down the street there's something about that experience yeah. and i think for us it's been so valuable to we get to walk our daughter to school and we get to know so many people right in our neighborhood. Sometimes I'll think of another family that's in her class and I'll think, I wonder where they live. And then I realize like, oh, they live in like a very small block radius around yeah. us because they go to the same elementary school as yeah. we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how far it would take to get over there. Oh, they're in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Lake Oswego has six elementary schools, plus they added a seventh one a couple of years ago. 
and that's the Palisades World School. They're calling it the World School, right? World Language School. World Language School. They have a Spanish immersion program and a Mandarin immersion program. So that's pretty special just right here in the public school district. Mm -hmm. They do have a lottery for admission into that school, but so far, everyone who's been interested in that option has been able to get in. I think it's becoming more popular. So at some point it may be that the lottery is full and isn't quite as easy, but that is a huge draw for a lot of people. And with the school districts here, what they've done is they've passed three different bonds over the last several years. And so they're about halfway through either rebuilding or retrofitting all of the entire schools here in the Lake Oswego School District, which is pretty cool because the kids are just getting you know, brand new facilities, if not a brand new building. They're getting new equipment for STEM, and now they call it STEAM. STEAM. When I was a kid, it was STEM. Anything else you want to talk about as far as the, the schools? And it's and also things? just a very engaged community. So in addition to the school district, there's the Lake Oswego School Foundation, which is a very involved community of parents and concerned citizens. And that provides additional funding to the schools for things like full-time art teachers and music teachers and really keeping extracurriculars right in the schools. I've also heard from a number of parents who have kids who need a little extra assistance, whether they're neurodivergent or they need some kind of extra hands-on help. And those parents have been so satisfied. I was talking to a dad over the weekend. They moved to Lake Oswego from the Northeast and that was the reason they moved was they wanted that kind of extra care for their son. And he's just been so happy. We've heard from a lot of people similar. So just the overall investment that the community pours into the schools, which then gets poured into the kids here, yep is really, really important. Yeah, and that goes all the way to the you know, parent involvement. There's a very high involvement with the PTSO as well. Moving on from schools, we could talk about just the overall family-friendly nature of Lake Oswego. Number three. Number three. Schools go along with that. Great schools tend to draw growing families into a community. So much of what Lake Oswego is about from the city services to the activities and the way the city is run is about making life really enjoyable for families. Whether it's riding on the trolley and meeting Santa over the holidays, getting to run into so many people that you know through school and activities right in town really gives you a sense of, it's that combination of small town and family friendly. And I think one of the things that's a little bit more of an intangible is that when people move to Lake Oswego, a lot of them are moving here for the long haul. They're thinking about the future, they're thinking about their kids' entire childhood, and they're moving here planning to stay for that. And that just creates an investment, a, a sense of real care in the community. People want to be very involved, and I think that helps the community just continue to get better and better. And it's not just for families, just to remind you, we have a really big retirement population here as well, plus people that move here with no kids. We really get the full kind of gamut. It's very welcoming to all people here in Lake Oswego. And that's one of the, I think, special things about it because I like it when kids are exposed of all ages, you know, not just families. Yeah, absolutely. The senior center that Aaron mentioned and just the sense of community, I think for retirees, I um, often joke with some girlfriends that I hope when I'm in my 70s, we're getting coffee at St. Honoré French Bakery because I see people in there gathering for coffee and get togethers and just the different kinds of activities in the community. I went to a, an author talk at the library and it was me and 70 retirees um, who were there for that. And they all knew each other. They were like chatting and getting to know each other. I think it really does create like more holistic ecosystem in the town when yeah. you have multiple generations represented. Which brings us to our con, our one major con here, which is gonna be housing. Home prices expect to pay 20 to 30% premium kind of for that Lake Oswego address over a lot of the other areas around here. Now, there are several factors that go into Lake Oswego being so much more expensive than a lot of the other towns around here. And one of those factors is we were just talking about, the city really is built for people from being raised here, being little kids, all the way up to retirement. It really retains a lot of the population here, a lot of the people here. We've met several families too that have you know, gone off to college, then gotten married, had kids, and then moved back 
that have been raised here to raise their kids because they enjoyed that experience so much. And their parents also have retired here and stayed here. Maybe they've downsized a little bit or moved closer here, you know, to the shopping areas. There's just less housing. So when things do come on the market, you know, if you're looking to buy in Lake Oswego, definitely reach out, give us a call, even if it's far out in the future, because we can kind of get that conversation going. So then when you're actually ready, you're kind of dialed into, you know, what are the home values? What exactly do I need? What kind of area do I want to be in? Because homes do move here pretty fast. And you might be looking online and say, hey, well, some homes have been on the market for a long time. There's always the exceptions there, but pretty much half the homes are going to go within that first couple of weeks as a general rule of thumb. And then the other half are going to maybe be a little overpriced, need price reductions, or have something quirkiness about the homes that might make it sit there a little longer. But in general, homes do move here at a decent clip, especially if you're in that million dollar range, like, you know, plus or minus right in there. Those are kind of the hottest homes here. Most people are in that price point of kind of that plus or minus million. Yeah, and I think if you're willing to take on a little bit more of a fixer, some people like that. We wanted that. We wanted to sort of make our mark on our home. That can help you get a deal. And there are just some neighborhoods and pockets that are gonna be less expensive, more affordable than other areas. And I think all the pros that we're talking about today really add up to the value here and why the cost is what it is. And like Aaron said, there's really nowhere for like as we go to grow they can't just keep building to create more affordable housing one of the reasons we did move out of the los angeles area several years ago to oregon was that we felt like the value here was really strong and our money went further here yeah. and that's still true but all these years later i would say i would choose it now like all things being equal cost wise i would prefer to live here than in the Los Angeles area. And so when you think of it that way, the cost looks a little different. Yeah, if I could have our same house, you know, in Los Angeles or here, I would definitely pick here just because of the stage of life we're at and what we wanted. We wanted that slower paced, small town feel. We didn't want to fight traffic, having to drive an hour plus commuting and all those things. And life is just way, 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 way easier here. Yeah. Okay, well, there's our con. And if you have any more questions, again, reach out to us about housing because I've done other videos that you can see right down there. If you click on our page that I go more in depth into housing, I just wanted you guys to be aware that that is the biggest con about living here is when you're considering Portland in general, you know, this is the most expensive area to live in. So with that con out of the way, we've got two more pros, just the natural beauty uh, yes, the natural beauty. I mean, look around where we are right now. Even though it's a little drizzling, we're huddled under this tree to kind of shade us here. This is a cherry rain. tree. So just a few a weeks job. ago, this area was just full of cherry blossoms. That's one of the things the rain brings is it brings all this greenery, all this blooming in the springtime. Lake Oswego has so much forest and tree and it's like a living forest. Is that what they call it? Yeah, living forest. We also are bordered by the Willamette River. There's the lake itself here. Portland in general and just outside of Portland is full of all of the beauty of the Pacific Northwest. Whether you love the mountains or the beach, hiking, it's all here. It really is and we've mentioned this before but we like to explore the beaches, just kind of the stage of life that we're at right now. When our kids get a little older, we're looking forward to exploring the, the mountains and skiing a little bit more than we have been able to so far, which has been next to zero. And number five pro, the location. Now, I know we talked about this a little bit in one of the other points earlier in the video, but this really deserves its own pro. The location, I mean, we are so centrally located here. Here, I'll throw up the map for you so you can see in relation to Portland, you got Westland right near us, Oregon City, Sherwood over on the southwest of us, you got Beaverton, and then you got Portland itself, downtown, southeast Portland, northeast Portland. I mean, you can see that we're ideally located right here to really be able to get to all around Portland. So if you wanna to go to the trendy restaurants that are in Northeast, Southeast, downtown, or art events, concerts that the city puts on, festivals, farmer's markets, because every little city and town has their own farmer's market, or you wanna go wine country, you're really, really centrally located right here. When you think about the proximity to Portland, this really should be like a suburb without its own core, just the location. And somehow it developed into its own community and town 
town. It was developed as really a vacation spot from the city. People had cabins on the lake and around that built its own town. The last two weekends, I've taken my daughter into Portland for different things. One was to go to a museum and one was for an activity for Girl Scouts. And you know, she'll tell you like, is this gonna be a long, long drive? And I say it's 18 minutes <laughs> to get like into, you know, the Southeast or the Northeast to go to a museum. Depending on where you're moving from, 18 minutes, it's just not a long, long drive, especially like there's no traffic really. You're just driving, crossing a bridge and you're there. And me personally, I like being over here on the west side of Portland. The Willamette goes north and south pretty much. And the east side is like Northeast, Southeast Portland. And the west side, you get like Lake Oswego, Westland, in Southwest Portland, Beaverton. And so we're a little closer on this side if you wanna you know, go to wine country or you wanna go to the beach. You're just that little bit extra closer than having to kind of get through some of the traffic on the east side, so that's a plus. And if you are working in an office, obviously that's gonna impact where you wanna live in the Portland Metro. I think for Lake Oswego, it is small, but if you were gonna work, say, at Nike or Intel or in the Silicon Forest, you do wanna pick your spot in Lake Oswego strategically just to save yourself like that 11 or 13 minutes can make a difference. And so if that's you, definitely get in touch and we can help recommend some neighborhoods that would just get you there that much more easily. Yep. You want to be a little closer to the five. And bonus tip, if you want to get on the lake or have lake access, it's very, very restricted. It's going to make this its own con, but in a longer video, we'll add this in there. It is a con if you want that lake access, just something to be very aware of. It's very private, very restricted. So you need a home with an easement if you're not actually on the lake. So there's about 3,000 homes that actually have either on the lake or lake access with an easement. So it's just something to be very aware of. And it's not always advertised in the listings. And I have a website that the city has where you can actually type in the address and you can verify if it has a lake easement. So reach out if that's something that's a high priority on your list. Yeah, I don't know if it's as much a con as it is something to be very aware if that's a priority for you when you're moving yeah. here you want to make the right decision from the beginning i think a lot of people think like oh you know this house is great we'll figure out the lake thing later but you you won't figure out the lake thing for that house later if it's something that's really important to you now there is a public swim park that about half the town has access to in the summertime. You can go down and picnic along the lake at a park and there's docks for swimming, but that's only open for about two very short months in the summertime. Yeah. Only when school's out. You're not putting on a boat or doing paddle boarding from that location. So if you guys are interested in moving to Lake Oswego or other areas around the Portland Metro, go ahead and reach out to me. My information's right down there in the description area. I'd love to set up a Zoom and see how I can best help you. And if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for the next one coming up right now.